the Californian Charles Lakes never spent enough hours in the gym. But as his critical moment approaches, his dedication to being ready at the right time may be perfect. Scott Johnson knows an Olympic dream simmers for four years. That a McBurger takes two minutes and 55 seconds to cook. And that his broken hand needs every extra minute to heal. Tim Daggett as well will not get an extra second to heal his shattered leg. It has been on the men for nine months since that fateful moment when doctors told him that dreams and common sense don't mix. The clock has been moving forward while counting down to that one moment in time when you must perform and prove that you are ready or not to represent the United States of America as Coca-Cola presents the U.S. Olympic trials in the sport of men's gymnastics. to try and copy your neighbors and your friends, especially when some of them were perfect. Instead, be what you can be, and hopefully what you do will be special enough to be remembered as an effort that will fit proudly in the American Olympic tradition. We are fast approaching that moment in time for 23 special gymnasts as Coca-Cola presents the 1988 Olympic Trials in Men's Gymnastics. Good afternoon, I'm Al Troutwick at the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City, Utah. We're here to see which six men will represent the United States in gymnastics in Seoul in September. And the process by which they're selected is a two-stage affair. First, July 9th in Houston at the U.S. Nationals, they earn 40% of their score. Then here at the trials in Salt Lake City, the last 60% is added on and the best six will go. Now, there are some men, two of them, old veterans, who will earn 100% of their score here in Salt Lake City because they were physically unable to compete in Houston. Here to talk about them and all the other men involved is, of course, Gordon Maddox. Now, Gordon, those two veterans are the gold medalists from Los Angeles. First, Scott Johnson, who had a broken hand, which is on the mend, and he looks pretty good. Well, Al, he had intended to go to the Olympic Games and then retire from the sport. When he broke his hand, it put a real glitch into his plan. He had surgery. He's now carrying around a couple of screws in that hand and says he feels good, but it did interrupt his training. But right now when he's competing, he's got all the chips out on the table. Now, due to the complex scoring procedure, we won't know where the Johnson and Daggett's of the world stand. And that brings me to Tim Daggett, who had a broken leg only nine months ago. And already we've seen Tim kind of stumble his way through a floor exercise and really didn't help his standing out at all. Yes, he didn't know whether or not he'd even be able to compete. And he watered down his floor exercise routine considerably. But in the first event, he only received a 9.0. So his work is really cut out for him. Now, already the men have competed on all six apparatus in the compulsories and one apparatus through one rotation of these optionals. And Charles Lakes has been much better than routine. Dan Hayden and his twin brother Dennis are also there in the top standings. And we'll begin focusing in on the pommel horse. While pommel horse work generally means double leg circles with the legs held tightly together, the trend is toward more single leg flares. But either way, all three sections of the horse must be used. Two scissor swings, such as these front scissors, are required. The hips must swing as high as the bottom part of the shoulder. Now, top-notch horse performers show solid, steady handwork. And as with every event, a solid dismount is important. We will begin at the top with the leader of the competition, Charles Lakes, 23 years old from New Hall, California. He fancies himself an artist. He's involved in music and in sketching. But right now, gymnastics is his canvas. He loves performing in front of a crowd and, and turning things on. Now, Dan Hayden was the leader after the U.S. Nationals, but when Hayden faltered in the compulsories, Gordon, Charles Lakes was right there to pick up the slack and beat him in front. He's having such a good competition. And as in every other event, he swings with such elan such abandon in this event he's aggressive he swings out swings fast really attacks the horse oh and he'll take that get a 9.5 in the compulsories on the pommel horse that looks to be a little bit better in his effort to become the first black gymnast to actually compete in the olympics for the united states another look now from the handstand swings into a reverse scissor which will set up a front scissor 
Now watch how high he lifts his hips. His hips will get all the way up to shoulder height, which is absolutely perfect. Now he breaks out of the scissors into more leg circles, does a behind-the-back travel. Now watch how well Charlie converts this circular motion into up-and-down motion in order to reach the handstand for his dismount. Right here, it's down and then up to the handstand and into a very solid landing. Well done. The judges award Charles Lakes with a 9.7 for his pommel horse routine in this, the second rotation. Ron Gallimore, by the way, was the first black gymnast to make the U.S. Olympic team, but didn't compete in 1980 because of the boycott. This is Dan Hayden, along with his brother Dennis. They are twins. They comprise one of the more enchanting stories here in Salt Lake. Well, it's, it's um, meant having a, a team kind of um, with me and uh, someone supporting me all the time. And even when uh, Daniel's not there, um, I feel his presence. When I uh, went to China and I was, um, Daniel was injured at that time, I didn't feel alone. And um, it was a neat feeling. Yeah, I think it's, it's very beneficial for both of us to um, have each other because we, we help each other in our training. Um, I try to help Dennis with his weaknesses as well as my, and he helps me with mine. And if Dennis is feeling down, I try to lift his spirits and, and vice versa. So it, it really um, helps a great deal in both of our training. Both of them originally from Amherst, New York, went to Arizona State, then left some bad feelings when they decided to leave school and train for the Olympic Games in Pennsylvania. They have both been injured on and off at different times, which has prevented them from competing at the same time, many times. But finally, here they are, and right in the middle of the race to make the Olympic team. And Dan is really swinging out. Up through his handstand. Now look how far his hips swing away from his hands. His body is almost perfectly horizontal. Good, solid exercise. Had one little glitch with his hands earlier. I don't think it was a deduction. Now, I don't know how many tenths of a point you lose for a glitch, but Dan has had his share, especially on floor exercise. First, it was a 9-0 in the compulsories, and then just a short while ago in the optionals, a 9.15. Dan really had his problems. He hit something so well, as in this mount, which is a very difficult tumbling pass. But then, for example, later on, he's trying to simply stand on one foot. He loses his balance, steps out of bounds, and loses a tenth of a point. Now, Dan has halted the slide for the time being. His score on the horse is a 9-7. He's there with his brother, Dennis, who's clearly 